Hello, and in this film we're going to be looking at tween, at wooden items, which have been made by members of the Bodgers. And these were all exhibited at the Bodgers Ball, and there's a huge range here. By the way, I love those birds pulling up the worm. That's the junior class. So a whole lot of things going to be showing you, tools, uh, bowls, spoons, etc, etc, etc. Lots and lots of lovely stuff. And starting off here, we have an axe. And the blade for that axe was cast using traditional hole-in-the-ground casting pits. All very primitive, but very, very clever. A nice bit of work on that axe there. And quite an interesting bit of braiding on the end, actually. The stitching done with leather as well. A rounding plane. I've popped a film up on how to make rounding planes. And I really like this knife. It's a really nice sheath. And it was a nice bit of forge work on the actual knife itself. So people exhibit, they get prizes. We have a themed item each year and because we were in Cambridge, it was the wetlands. Very flat area uh, with a lot of wetland and a very nice hat fair. A couple of eel traps. This was the larger one and really an impressive bit of basket work. So these are used to catch eels and once the eel gets in, they can't get out. It's a, like a one way system. So a funnel to get them in and then find it difficult to get out. Lots of eels on the fens. Uh, a ditch digging spade fair for digging out. And then another eel trap. And this was a smaller one, but the same sort of principle about the entry hole and then the sort of making it difficult for the eel to come out. Very nice bit of basket work. Really admire the craft in these. I guess there can't be many people now who can make one of those. You get some really nice entries in these, and they're sort of slightly unusual, so a nice little basket there. And it's made from rush, uh, leather handles, and some nice riveting, and because we are talking wetlands, it has some nice little feet as well. Nice little piece of work, a nice little rim on that. Very nicely done. I think all these things, they'd be lovely to use and to own, they're all nice and natural. This one was a bit unusual. It's actually making the string, um, well, into rope for floats, etc. So for fishing out on the fins. I like that bowl, a nice bit of paintwork and a lovely bit of carving. Nice bit of duck. It's ingenious what people come up with and it's always nice. A black bin bag holder, I'm not certain quite... Um, the bin bag, how sort of green that is in some regards, but it's nice to see a good holder for it. And so, yep, some more prize giving. Each category, people get some prizes. And it's lovely that people enter and share what they're doing. Field and craft. Um, this person made this lovely phone holder on one of the leather courses that I ran. And I think she made an excellent job. Lovely stitching there. A nice bit of boyer's binding on the strap. And it takes the phone very happily. Very nice piece of work. Uh, a nice bar bark basket. A, a, a bag from bark and leather. And it just shows what you can do with natural materials. Some lovely things. You imagine going with that. You won't see many of those down the high street. Quite a skill bit of work to make, but not, you know, not too bad. Must give it a proper go sometime. I've done the bark stripping. There's a film on that. Very nice basket, this one. Very nicely woven. Very tight and very well done. I rather like this. You know, I've got a spinning wheel at the moment. Well, here we have a fleece um, being made into a nice warm little mat. And that would be very comfortable. I can imagine a cat liking to sit on that. And then more bark work, stitching on bark work to make this container. This was interesting. This basket um, was actually dyed by using uh, oak bark and arm like filings and um, you get that lovely bluey effect, which is rather good. Turned treen, so this is wooden items turned on a foot-powered pole lathe. So a spring lathe, no electrical power, just a foot lathe. And again, very intricate work and nicely painted on that goblet. I was particularly impressed by this salad bowl. Lovely handle, it's huge. You imagine turning that, the weight of it on a pole lathe and then having to dodge the handle and the spout as it rotates. A very nice piece of work, very well executed, and it felt lovely in your hand. Really nice. 
that people really have produced in the past sort of five years. Oh, a nice little candlestick, I like that. People really have produced some very, very good bowls on the pole laves. It's most impressive. I probably ought to say bowl laves. Even um, the old locking lid bowls. So these have been revived and people are now making these. And it's quite a bit of skill to get that to fit nicely. And that was a lovely piece of work. Quite a sort of lot of interest as people get their prizes. And it's always nice, there's the locking lid one. <laughs> nice to see people getting recognition for what they're doing. And there's the salad bowl. Uh, very nice work, very skilled. That person's also a blacksmith as well and he does some lovely stuff. Non-turned treen. So these are wooden items which haven't been done on a pole lathe. They've basically been carved out with carving knives. And again, very nice little display there and quite a sort of rich variety of items and people using some quite interesting finishing techniques, apart from sort of oils using burning as quite a nice technique, or in this case, some carving. And look at that intricate bit of carving going all the way around and very well defined and nicely edged. Burnt finish on this one. It's quite attractive. I think that was ash. Yes, ash, um, burnt ash on that one. Quite a handsome size and beautifully done. I do like these um, long bowls. They're, they're really nice. And this one, it had some very nice little knife work detailing. And look at those feet. All perfect. And it sat perfect. And it's just so, so elegant, so slender. I really liked that. And I like the decoration. It's simple, uh, but effective. And it's a nice, it was a nice to hold in your hand. It was nice and slim. And it had a lovely bit of wood uh, graining on it as well. You can imagine serving up your bread rolls in one of those. <laughs> and then we have quite an interesting um, multi-sided bowl here with like a milk paint finish. Nicely done. A little knife. And you look across the table, your eyes constantly being caught by other items. A bit of bone inserted there and decorated, which actually gives a very striking sort of contrast and makes it very attractive. Quite an interesting idea doing that. So order and bone on that one. It's simple, but it's effective. That'd be a nice knife to hold in your hand. A whisk, you've got it all here. Pretty well everything bar the kitchen sink. And if you don't think you can make flowers out of wood, you'll see some flowers in just a minute. That looks like an attempt by the Kent Bodgers. Very nice. Uh, little bowl there, nice fluting all round, and they've kept the bark on. I think they did rather well on that one. But it looks like one of my friends, we popped the film up on doing those. And then there are some cups. Again, nicely done, nicely finished. So yeah, it's nice. You see all this stuff, you get little ideas, and you think, here up, flowers. <laughs> yes, they are wood. Um, I think it may be in teasel stems and wood. And again, more of the prize giving. We had lovely weather, it's really sunny. So these are spoons. Now spoons, these are the sanded finish. We also have a category for knife finished spoons. And the sanded finish um, are obviously smooth. They've been sanded. People sometimes use Abronet and they come up very nicely. Again, quite interesting innovation. So this one, it actually had multi woods in it. We've got ebony, boxwood, sycamore. Uh, is that red teak and plain? I think I may have seen that right. Uh, interesting though, because you get this different approach. You know, it doesn't have to be out of one piece of wood. Someone's thought, let's try many bits of wood and I think this is the thing now you're getting people they're innovating trying that's a nice little coffee scoop they're trying sort of new ideas and pushing the boundaries and pushing the traditional boundaries which is good because it takes the craft forward I thought this little pig one if you into pigs or maybe for a child it'd be a nice little size and nice and smooth uh, that's a rather fun spoon you imagine growing up with that it'd be rather nice perhaps into music <laughs> Very well done. I mean, you've got to bear in mind, people have taken a branch and they've actually made these just by taking a branch and then carving it 
and putting decoration on and it's really nice the little cards they say what wood so that one's apple wood and people have to say if they're using power tools or not so it's just to have a little chance to give a bit of description about the materials and sometimes the method that's being used and um, people all the people looking at these will vote for their favorites so it's a very fair way of coming to a decision as to which is which i really like that spoon it is small it's simple but i really like the simplicity and the handle on that and a rather handsome a larger spoon there so yeah people look they'll probably all have their personal favorites but they're, they're all clever in different ways look at that nice bit of milk paint and a nice bit of shaping for that bowl and again very well done you try getting a nice thin side to a spoon it's not that easy and here we are managed to keep the bark on <laughs> all shapes all sizes i've popped a film up on using a spoon mule and carving an english eating spoon to give an idea so these are the knife finished spoons i personally like knife finished um, i like looking at old antique furniture and seeing the woodworking tool marks on it and i, I like knife finish on spoons just personal a lot of people as you can see like the sanded look at that detailing though colorosing on there very nicely done so i've done a little bit of that nothing to that standards but i've dyed it with coffee to get it in the grain and it worked quite well i was quite pleased gave it to my dear wife as a present so again a little bit different here bit of coloring going in People have got very good at getting good spoon shapes in terms of making them comfortable to hold and to actually hold the, your food in a sort of level way as it enters your mouth. And there's quite a lot of sort of thought and detail into getting the hold right and to getting it going into your mouth right. And I think when you've made a few spoons, you begin to realise that you, you need to sort of put a bit of work into the ergonomics of spoons as well as the actual design and appearance now this is a bit of a catch-all class it's for other wooden items and i always rather like it because you get a right mix of things and i was seriously impressed by this picnic hamper um, on the end here so it's actually containers with containers f fitting over each other wonderful lids and levers to hold the lids on and lovely leather strapping to hold it all so you can have your lunch in one part your tea in the next part and it's all held beautifully together and this has been turned on a pole lathe i mean the depth the thinness the precision it's really impressive look at that so um yeah just a joy and the leather work was very nice as well <laughs> very good a very nice little shot beaker here uh, quite attractive, quite a nice patterning on that they've put on and very pleasing to again hold a lot of these items you feel the touch and they're very nice in your hands it's got a nice natural wood to it I really am always sort of I enjoy just the sheer range of things that people come up with so we have a picnic set and it's a nice bit of Harris tweed for the pocket with a nice blanket stitch all around the edge and you can imagine someone thinking oh I quite like a little picnic set so they find a little bit of remnant of cloth or maybe they wove it themselves it looks nice as though it may have been done at home and um, yeah good carving I mean whoever did that they can carve these trunks are good um, they're tiny I've put a film up of making trucks I think with this person who put these in actually and very skilled truck maker but lovely little trucks there how he does it in such small size i do not know that is a didgeridoo in the background and boy oh it makes a noise it really does very nice tray a lovely um top sort of rail on that tray really nicely done and look at that someone's done a nice little bit of carving they've sat down with a bit of log and they've put a lovely carving on it and they've probably enjoyed doing that to boot it's very nice so yeah good little selection there um, there were some bigger items in this category this year which was quite interesting a very nice table with a u-top there 
uh, a lovely little stool, and then a fan bird. Now, in the pre-ball courses, um, Sean Hellman was running courses on making fan birds, and he's done a little book on fan birds. He's the guy I interviewed, a lovely guy, um, with the Shave Horses book. So you'll find a film in the woodworking section from Sean there. But he makes these out of one piece of wood, slices them with a knife, a uh, sort of two-handled knife, and then unfolds them, and it's quite remarkable. As was this, Copper Beach, little set. So you have a table and two chairs. And look, they are connected by the natural branch. So what's happened here is two trees have grown up, two branches are fused together, and then this person's come along, they thought, right, let's make a couple of chairs and keep them conjoined with that branch. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So rare to see that, and then to actually use it and utilize it in that way. It is really lovely. And it was lovely colors, uh, lovely surfaces, very tactile. But also there's a rarity of finding that. And um, I think that got the best in show from memory, not completely certain, I think it did, and quite deservedly so. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing all of those and thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next film.